serial communication triggers will help you isolate and view serial communication lines. They can allow you to zoom further into the signal and trigger on either the start or stop or on a restart of the actual data transmission along with the address and data being captured and other pertinent information. In order to demonstrate serial triggering, I've connected our demo board via analog probes to our scope and I've connected channel 1 to clock and then channel 2 is to data. I've also set up serial decode just to give you an idea of what's actually being transmitted from the board to the instrument itself. And this is going to be our clock signal here and here's our data. If we actually zoom in a little bit, we'll give you a better idea of the clock and the data. And now if we zoom out, just for you um, to see the decode going on. And for serial uh, triggering, we have a couple different options with the 1000Z. We've got RS-232, I2C, and SPI. And then for all of them, they pretty much operate the same way. You go ahead and you set your clock line. For this, it's channel 1. Your data line, for, and for this, it's channel 2. And then for SPI, we can actually go ahead and set our start, restart, stop, um, along with a misacknowledged bit, address, and data. And we can also go ahead and choose either auto, normal, or single trigger. For this, I'm choosing normal. Serial triggering is a useful technique for capturing serial data, for basically going in and looking for errors, and also just viewing information itself. And it's not necessarily needed to be paired with serial decode, but for this to demonstrate, I have paired it with serial decode. 